Warm greetings to all. I'm Dr. Vijay Shankar Ashwagan, researcher, Chalmers University of Technology, Kothapak, Sweden. I'm really happy to present few of my perspective on the global education, what I gained through the uh, process uh, which I learned in an international university and which I uh, learned through academic platforms around the world uh, because I was I was working nearly in four international universities in past 12 years. So in various continents like in Europe and in Asia, in China, India and uh, in when you consider Europe, it's uh, Norway and Sweden. So I have few uh, understanding over the global education through the experience which I gained. So I'm really happy to present my perspective on this one. Really, I'm uh, happy to share this thing uh, in virtual international conference on advancements in research and education uh, conference uh, jointly organized by associations of global academicians and researchers of Andhra Pradesh and Association of Indian Biologists. So education. So what is mean by education is a first thinking process we need to uh, get in. Education is a process of facilitating learning or the acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, beliefs and habits. So that's why the education in the global perspective, it includes uh, which also strengthen or enhance the local and uh, national thinking, local ethnicity. And the, uh, for in, a, in example, where there is an indigenous people, the education process should include indigenous people uh, into the majoritarian state. So the, there are global perspective of including everything. So whatever the beliefs, the cultural, our, our habits or the ethnicity. So all this should be accommodated within education. So education is a process of facilitating learning, acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, beliefs and habits. So the educational method include teaching, training, storytelling, discussion and directed research. So education frequently takes place under the guidance of educators. However, the learners can also educate themselves. So we should not restrict the term or terminology of education within the classroom or within the closed circle or within through the guidance of some educators. So as a kid, as a children, as a youth, we are always getting education through the social values, through the society, what we are seeing, through the family circle, through the ethnicity, through the national things. So we are we are continuously getting educated. We are continuously our educate educated people irrespective of whether we are going to school or not. So getting education in school is about the particular perspective, not about the complete education. You're, if you are finishing your school and college or university, it doesn't mean you are completely educated. Education is a com continuous learning process. It's a continuous learning process through various phenomena, through the various medium, through the various directions. So that's more important to understand what is education. So in other terms, it, intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education when you speak on uh, some particular school or college or university education. So it's not only providing the intelligence or knowledge or skills on particular things. So it also means the education should include intelligence plus the overall character. So that's the goal of true education, we can say. So what we need to understand and discuss on global education. So the education is the learning and skill process. So that's what we saw in a previous slide. So education includes everything and education is a continuous process. So when we talk about how we are making an education as a constructive platform through the various means, through schools and universities, through the governmental organizations. So more particular here is the decentralization. So the decentralization is a phenomena which is well understood, well established in the global circle, like how we are devolving our power from the top to bottom in terms of education to provide the local education a strengthened way 
So there are many research papers which say the decentralization of power in the education circle is also equal to high quality education. So when we are talking about this, this is what happening in European countries. This is what happening in America. This is what happening in China. In particular, if you're speaking about the school education, if, if you say or if you understand the Finland education is one of the best in, in the present world. If you look carefully into the Finland model or if you look carefully into the Nordic model, we can say Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, that's the Nordic countries. So more or less, it's a, there are a similar way of uh, rules and laws uh, in terms of education. Everything is pointed towards decentralization. So decentralization is a more important in education phenomena. Then the, then the more important phenomena is a mother tech education. Even the global or like a global organization or UNESCO or UNICEF call this as a basic human rights. So that's why providing a mother tongue based education comes under the human rights law in UN conventions. So we will see these, these things. And, and again, another phenomenon is the social values. We should respect social values of all the ethnic people living in a land or all the indigenous people living in a country. So education means should include or incorporate everyone. We should not discriminate anyone for any basis, irrespective of ethnicity, irrespective of cultural values, irrespective of their language. So we need to include everyone. We need to bring a social values. So we should respect the social circumstances. We should respect everyone. So that's also a means of a development in education. So if you're providing education to a particular people uh, because of their economical value, if, if, if you are providing education to particular people because of their background, so it doesn't mean education. So education should include everyone irrespective of anything. So that's a, one of the key factor when you talk about global education. So we need to see what are the universal declaration of human rights. As I told you in the previous slide, providing education comes under human rights law and providing education in mother tongue, it also comes under human rights law. If you see carefully into the universal declaration of human rights adopted in 1948, so it article 26 says everyone has the right to education. Also, UNESCO 1960 convention say uh, against the discrimination in education. So you cannot discriminate anyone. So when the convention against the discrimination in education started in 1960, thereafter the new conventions on again other discriminations like a racial or sexual or cultural values, those things came into the factors. So what I mean from this slide is, so the discrimination in education was the first preliminary focus on the global phenomena, uh, like including in UNESCO or UN. So that's, that's a key factor. Then the developed world or the human rights organization thought about the other form of human rights in other platforms, a right to children or right to all migrant workers, a right of persons with disabilities. So these all things are included later on, but the preliminary focus was given to the education, uh, like a right to education or the education uh, which should be against all the discriminations. So when you talk uh, in detail about the universal declaration of human rights as a common standard of achievement for all the peoples and all nations to the end that every individual and every organ of society Keeping this declaration constantly in mind shall strive by teaching and education to promote respect for these rights and freedoms and by progressive measures, the national and international to secure their universal and effective recognition and observance both among the peoples of member state themselves and among the peoples of territories under their jurisdiction. So when you are signing this universal declaration of in human rights, so it's not only that you are signing as a member state, it also obligated to respect this declaration to provide 
all the opportunities to the people of territories under your own jurisdiction. Also, it should include every individual, it should include every organ of society, it should make, make them equally getting the education and promote their freedom of thought process, freedom of rights, and all the progressive measures should be included. So the Article 26 in particular talk about everyone has a right to education. Education shall be free at least in the elementary and fundamental stages. Elementary education shall be compulsory. The technical and professional education shall be made generally available and higher education shall be equally accessible to all on the basis of merit. So the education shall be directed to full development of the human personality and to the strengthening of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. It shall promote understanding, tolerance, friendship among all nations, racial or religious groups and shall further the activities of the human United Nations for the maintenance of peace. So the parents have the prior right to choose a kind of education that shall be given to their children. So Article 29 in particular stressing the development of child's personality, talents, mental and physical ability to their fullest potential, the development of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms and for the principles en enshrined in the character for the United Nations, the development of respect for the child's parent, his or her own cultural identity, language and values for the national values of the country in which the child is living, the country from which he or she may originate and for civilizations different from his or her own. So this is the particular point I want to stress again. The education or the educational institute should respect child's parent. Then they should respect child's cultural identity, language, values, like a, as a whole national perspective. If the child is from within the same nation or if she or he from different nation or from the different countries or from the different province even within the country. So it should be respected. So the child's identity, like a cultural identity, language and the racial things and their cultural value should be respected irrespective of where she or he originated from. So that's a more important point I want to stress here. So the preparation of child for responsible life in a free society in a spirit of understanding, peace, tolerance, equality of sexes, friendship among all peoples, ethnic, national and religious groups and persons of indigenous origin. So it should be included when we are living in Norway or Sweden. Here we see the school education which completely going under this universal declaration of human rights even in terms of education because they are making very peaceful environment to accommodate everyone from the all all the different nations so they are trying to establish a peace among them they try to establish our all or strengthen the value about the tolerance the strengthen the value of equality of sexes i see that here even they are not and discriminating by using the word boys and girl. Even in Nordic countries, we are seeing it practically or in our day to day life. No teacher call any anything like a, any group in terms of boy or girl. They they always form a mixed group. They always name as a friend. They don't name like she or he even. So th they always do that to make an equality in the sexes. So they also try to make friendship among all the peoples or all the children irrespective of where they are from and they are making an equal opportunity for everyone here. So when we are reading this universal declaration of human rights in terms of education, we are practically see this in our Nordic countries. Uh, at least I was living in Norway and Sweden. I heard about many things from Finland and Denmark. So I, I can say all the Nordic countries are following these things very particularly and very strictly. 
and and the universal declaration of human rights article 29 also stressing the development of respect for natural environment so that's a point which included in article 26 and 29 in terms of education that's what i want to bring it to your uh, foresight or to make you uh, like an initial thought process about these things so unicef also provided few guidance so that's what we are seeing in this slide so it means the quality learning requires a safe friendly environment qualified and motivated teachers and instruction in language students can understand so unicef is very particular in this mother tongue based education because of this policy so the instruction should be in the languages students can understand that's a more important phenomena in the global perspective which uh, comes under unicef it also the like education also requires a learning outcomes be monitored and feedback into instructions so in 144 countries around the world unicef works to provide learning opportunities that prepare children and adolescents with the knowledge and skills they need to thrive so they are taking a three key areas one is the access so the gender equitable access to quality education from early childhood to adolescence including for children with disabilities marginalized children and those living in humanitarian and emergency settings so the equal accessible accessibility should be provided to them so that's a more important global phenomena then the th second process is the learning and skills the quality learning outcomes and skills development that come from strong education systems and innovative solutions the emergencies and fragile context improved learning and production of child children in emergencies and on move so these all things are uh, like a key guidance provider from unicef so apart from that now we are moving to the second topic which is decentralization of education so many countries have implemented new educational reforms over the last 20 years and the reform trends are similar <coughs> across the countries so that's more particularly coined towards decentralization i can say the forces of globalization have been held responsible for the convergence of educational policies in a world where knowledge is regarded as a new economy right but still i can say after the establishment or after after the globalization spread around the world in every nook and corner then the decentralization of education also started in parallel because there are more researchers which is linking decentralization of power of education from the central to the state to the local bodies which is also equal to high quality education so when we talk about the globalization in terms of economical need in terms of uh, economical growth in terms of industrial growth so more important phenomena is to bring in high quality education to everyone it's not only so the global globalization or the the multinational companies don't want like students from one particular background so students they don't want students from particular cities they don't want students from particular language so they are they want equally treated and equally provided opportunities to everyone so that the real high quality educated people comes from everywhere so that's how the globalization world also thinking even in terms of economical growth even in terms of uh, high product industries because if you are taking students or or the adults from particular background that won't fit at all to the sustainable and future growth process so they they will stop at some point so the the growth or the or the graph stop at some point so they want to include everyone to every race to include every indigenous people to include everyone from the part of all the countries if you want to make them included the decentralization of education is a very key phenomena to make everyone to be accommodated within the educational model within the global education model that's the key point i i want to stress so highly educated workforce is necessary for countries to be able to compete on the world market and the quality education is seen as an answer to increase the average level of knowledge in population so according to the organization of economic cooperation and development a preferable strategy to achieve high quality education is to implement reforms 
emphasizing educational decentralization so the decentralization usually refers to the movement from the center to the periphery so the decentralization also include it have more accountability it have more autonomy and democratic process it have good authority to provide very good service so the service del delivery is authorized by the local uh, organizations or local bodies so all these things strengthen the decentralization of education process in terms it provides high quality education that's a thing uh, this modern world or nowadays thinking or jumping into uh, such decentralization way so the decentralization it's it's a three type of process one is a deconcentration delegation or devaluation the decentralization of education what we are mean here is the devolution of power so in india we have already a deconcentrated educational model like we have a central government we have a state government we have local bodies but that's actually a deconcentration and nowadays of course there are it's jumping into the delegation model like sitting from delhi or sitting from the somewhere in the top they just delegating the order to the bottom so we are not stressing the point of deconcentration or delegation in terms of decentralization of education what we are speaking now we are talking about devolution of power so that's the mean what we are saying so that's why if you see the graph here the deconcentration and delegation it is more leaning towards less decentralized and real meaning of decentralization lies within the devolution of power that's a more decentralized way so the decentralization as a devolution implies the transmission of authority and responsibility from central to local bodies the devolution is the only category of decentralization in which local authority and independence are clearly increased decentralization brings public services closer to people as they have more opportunity to participate more actively in decision making process of local policies and activities than in the centralized one the z decentralization also provides people opportunity to become involved in the decision making process so this allows for greater flexibility and makes it possible for better decision to be made because persons at the scene of action are more closely related to the problem so that's why uh, out of these things i'm i want to stress this point uh, in terms of devolution because they are more close to the problem so they can be involved they can be they can actively involved in policy making decision making and in the activities so when you are delegating someone from the top it doesn't mean you are understanding the real root problem of the bottom so you are just getting data from different sites or different peripheries and and in concentrated way you are getting a policy decision when you are delegating or deconcentration uh, from from the from the top to bottom but that doesn't give real meaning because in order to understand the local problems in order to in order to actively resolve the problems in the local governance you need a person from the local root or from the bottom or from the periphery to make them actively involved to resolve the problems or actively involved in making a, a clear cut decision actively transforming the knowledge actively transforming uh, their power so you need to be decentralized in a in a devolution of power way so that all these things are included so the decentralization may foster more local loyalty to regional identities than the national identity so in the way even the state governments are more happy enough to get strength and or enhance the regional identities which is very needed perspective in terms of a federal government system like in india so that that makes them more autonomy so they are more loyal to their regional identities and also of course there are there are there may be a fear that they may lose national identity no need for such fear because when we are having a decentralized way in a actively involved central government providing a equal opportunity and equal autonomy to the, all the state they are really lean towards the central government so the autonomy doesn't mean they are getting detached from the central government 
or from the central power it doesn't mean that it also mean in another perspective they are closely attached by indirect way so that strengthen the local attachment to the local government and by the way it also attached to the central government so no need for such a fear the devolution of power in terms of education at least i am speaking now it doesn't mean you are getting away from the complete nationality identity or complete nationality platform it doesn't mean it doesn't mean because we are saying this confidently we are saying this in many federal governments like in switzerland like in german like in usa they have more devolved power in every terms of uh, education or every terms of other powers or other authorities but still they are attached to the national or the central way they are locally strengthening their idea towards the central government so no need for such a fear that's what i want to stress here so the future of education will move towards a decentralized and global network of educational experiences it will be a system enhanced by technology so students get the education they want and need rather than education solved down their throat so there are three preconditions required for decentralized education system common national level long term strategic aims and must be established and local level plans such as curriculum and an equity plan must be developed and then implemented the quality work student assessment continuous improvement of learning environments and practices implemented at the local level and the professional teachers must collaborate and engage in broad planning and access their teaching abilities and their students learning outcomes so these are the three preconditions in terms of decentralization of education so now we are uh, moving on to another part two which is mother tongue based education so nelson mandela mandela once says if you talk in a man in a language he understand that goes to his head if you talk to him in his mother tongue that goes to his heart that's a phenomena we need to understand uh, in terms of the value of mother tongue so here is a jim cummins is a professor of uh, in university of toronto he is well known among the mother tongue based education policy or research methodologies uh, categories so he is one of the uh, pro professor or researcher i can say who brought very clear and different perspective in the modern world thinking to accommodate mother tongue education which means it also getting good success rate in terms of high quality education that was his research so even in 2010 he emphasized children who come to school with a strong foundation in their mother tongue develop strong literacy abilities in the language used at school and succeed educationally so if you talk about the mother tongues there are few important thing uh, among the education so that's a personal identity development cultural identity successful multilingualism learning educational performance emotional and mental growth the ability to learn and read a language development so the success of mother tongue based uh, bilingual or multilingual education policies is also rooted nowadays in all the global phenomena including the inclusion of policies because they are trying to establish a multilingual education through the mother, mother tongue based so that that's called mtb mother tongue based multilingual education mtb mle that's a new uh, policy framework designed by unesco and unicef uh, to provide uh, mother tongue based education and then from the mother tongue based education they are also giving multilingual based education in the later stage after certain uh, number no, certain years of growth so the mother tongue based education if you are speaking uh, the children says if you don't understand how can you learn so even the teacher when they are not completely understanding the real terminologies from the language which they are completely new to them but how they try to teach to the children that's a different things right so th this is a question which raised by this question uh, this is the question raised by the children uh, which which also makes us to think so once we decided to teach someone we should understand the language which is in the book and we also should be we also should understand the language of kid 
or the child. So then only the high quality education can be established. So the mother tongue based education methodology, it means there are three categories we need to identify or we need to think the impact of individuals psychological and personality development shape your thoughts and emotions it expresses first feelings fear and happiness the second category is the indicator of cultural identity yes this connects to the family this connects to the relatives culture and religion so this is a powerful tool to preserve and convey culture and cultural ties the, the third phenomenon we need to understand is the basis of learning another language there are many research works carried out to show to provide the, res the results were provided in many developed nations in many educational academic platforms that mother tongue based education is a basis for learning another language it develops strong liter stronger literacy abilities in the language used at the schools it also the familiar familiarity with the nonces of their mother tongue how to learn it use it enable children to learn another language efficiently so the mother tongue education never stopped anyone to learn another language in another world another word we can say mother tongue based education is a basis for any child to learn multiple languages so mother tongue based education is a preliminary key to open the knowledge towards a multilingual or multiple educations so this is an, another convention on U united nations of human rights so this is the convention on rights of child which speaks about uh, very clearly on the mother tongue based education uh, for example here uh, even in uh, 2020 march 20 like just few months back few weeks back we can say uh, they, they also provided a few things or few guidance on the education language and the human rights of minorities so of this, the 37th point and 38th point talks about the growing visibility of language in education as a human rights issue. So here they are talking about the indigenous and tribal population uh, rights on the mother tongue based education. And they are trying to guide the countries or try to guide the nations to accommodate all the indigenous people uh, to accommodate them within the mother tongue based education of their own. So it, because of the indigenous people doesn't have much power uh, to speak of uh, they, they it's not good to include them in the education of language which they are away of or they are uh, not part of we can say so the human rights assembly is keen on this and they're trying to provide guidance to the nations to get accommodated of all the indigenous languages within uh, mother tongue based education policies even in 2008 the MTB MLE was started. Uh, I have very uh, a few research papers which I was uh, came through, uh, in particular in Thailand, in particular in Indonesia, uh, in particular in Papua Guinea, in South African countries like African continents and South American uh, countries where there are more indigenous peoples. They were not included in the part of mother tongue based education so far. So from the 2008 MTB MLE process was started uh, by UNESCO and UNICEF is monitoring that they, they are trying to include all the indigenous people uh, towards the mother tongue based education. So even in Papua Guinea Highland where there are more uh, more than 700 languages. Now they are included 400 languages for mother tongue based education policies. Even in Sweden, where I am located, the Swedish government is providing 70 languages in a mother tongue based education uh, policies. So they are trying to include more in future days, but at least now they are having 70 language te te teachers because when, when a child coming from new country to get into the accommodated into the Sweden education, so they need to understand their own mother tongue first then by the way they can easily get into attached to the Swedish language or the English language that's a policy nowadays even the Nordic countries are very firm towards providing mother tongue based education in the child's own language so they are not only providing mother tongue education for their own kids like for for their own Swedish or Nordic or Finnish kids Norway, not, not only to the Norwegian kids they are also trying to provide mother tongue education uh, for the children 
irrespective of where they are coming from, at least for the preliminary few years to make them clear understanding in their own mother language. By the way, they know through the various research, they know they concluded it through that way. They can include those children into the Swedish education policy very firmly and in a sustainable way. So even uh, coming back to our point on the 2020 March uh, Declaration on Human Rights uh, Organizations, so the human rights obligations on the use of minority language in education was also very clearly uh, guided under the 58 and 59 point. So they are also talking about the bilingual and multi multicultural educations uh, to accommodate minority language kids to accommodate into the educational tradition to accommodate uh, into the local conditions. Uh, by the way, they are getting very high quality education. They, they, they know they, they can provide very high quality education through this way. So these are the things are considered even very recently in human rights so, uh, organization. That's what I want to uh, bring in these slides to show how important to in accommodate the indigenous people's mother tongue in the education policies. So when when talk about the mother tongue based education, there are a few researchers who are continuously working. Uh, one among them was Jim Cummins, which we saw in a initial slides. The other was a two way uh, Skudnap uh, Kangas. Uh, she also uh, very uh, keen in making more research towards mother tongue based education. She provided very valuable reports and even she called this as a linguistic human rights. And at some point, if you are not providing the mother tongue based education to the indigenous people or to the uh, people of a particular province or state, uh, it means it's also equal to linguistic genocide in education. That's what she also claiming. And most of the human rights organization and the academic organizations are accepting such claim. So that's why they are nowadays very keen enough in providing or bringing all the all the indigenous peoples to the uh, mother tongue based education policies. So so these are the things uh, which is like in a um, growing way in a research platform uh, to make everyone to get their own mother tongue based education. So this is an another act uh, even I think this is an uh, act uh, in Indian law, there's a right of children to free and compulsory education at Act 2009. Even this act is very clearly establishing their stand on the medium of instruction shall as far as practicable be in child's mother tongue. So that's uh, even India stand uh, because that's that's going to be the global stand nowadays. That's going to be the global stand even in future. So India has to accommodate uh, even of course India Indian education law is keep on telling this from the beginning. This is the what this is what I want to bring in because in 2009 they they uh, provided the right of children act. Uh, they they try to in, include many new things out of such things. They are strongly establishing their stand towards child's mother tongue. So that's what I want to show this slide. So this is uh, what I am talking about in a pre previous previously like a MTB MLE, a mother tongue based multilingual education. So MLE refers to the first language first. So if if the child's mother tongue is the first, so you need to learn that in a first. So that's a first language first education that is schooling which begins in a mother tongue and transition to additional languages. Uh, these things it's because for example, as I told you in my previous slide, my child my children are living in Sweden. So the Swedish government or Swedish schools are providing them with a Tamil language because that's their father first language. That's their mother tongue. So they are trying to give knowledge in Tamil. Then they are trying to slowly trans transition. They, they are making slow transition towards Swedish language after three years. So they want the children to understand clearly and, and make the thought process in their mother tongue first before getting into new language education when we are living in different countries. So, th so that's what I want to stress again. The city where, where I'm living in Sweden is providing 70 language based educations. 
So ML is the use of more than two languages for literacy and instruction. It starts from where the learners are and from what they already know. So what can we do uh, to enhance the capability of mother tongue based education uh, irrespective of what government policies, irrespective of what uh, school policies are? So what we can do is the parental motivation is a preliminary thing. Children love mother tongue always. So we need to encourage them. Don't stop their learning skills. Don't interfere in their thought process. Guide them with your experience. When my, my, when my children was born in Norway, the Norwegian doctor was clearly said to them, said to us that talk to your kid, talk to your child in your mother tongue when you are, when you are speaking inside your home. So don't consider where you are living, whether it is Norway or Sweden, try to speak in mother tongue when you are when you are speaking within your home within your family members so the least second language to the outside world and speak to the children only in your mother tongue at home so devote time each day to reading and writing in mother tongue tell stories and discuss interesting topics on your childhood celebrations develop their oral and vocabulary skills watch tv series or favorite cartoons with them in mother tongue language Listen to songs in mother tongue. Send children to centers that offer courses and other types of learning in your language. So with these things, I'm concluding my talk today. So we are talking about the decentralization policy. We are talking about the human rights policies on mother tongue based education. We are talking about mother tongue based MTB MLE today. These are the global phenomena. These are the things in the global arena in the academic platforms. So we need to think in this direction. We need to think in this direction to accommodate within the modern and developed world. Thank you for listening. And if you are if you're having any questions, I'm really happy to answer through my email. Uh, uh, my email ID is provided here.